Chris, you asked about Mark 262, the origin of it, how we got involved in the Mark 262 uh, project to begin with. In 1996, we won a contract with the Army Marksmanship Unit for 80 grain match ammunition. We frankly didn't expect to win that competition because it was very difficult. The specifications were frankly impossible, but we did our best on it. We told them where we didn't meet their specifications and it pretty much written off that, that there wasn't much chance we'd win it. We actually won it. Uh, that was our first introduction to the U.S. market in, in for military stuff. Uh, since we did well on that, they said, Jeff, could you guys do other stuff? And I said, well, certainly. So that led into other ammunition uh, uh, from the 80 grain was a single load, 600 yard run, uh, cartridge. After that, we were doing 73s, 69s, 77s, and uh, that worked real well. And as soon as word got out that we were doing a good job for the Army Marksmanship Unit, uh, the Marines came to us and the Navy came to us and said, Jeff, you're doing some stuff for AMU and apparently they're really happy. Will you do some stuff for us? And so Black Hills uh, started making Marksmanship Unit ammunition for the Marine Corps and the Navy as, as well as the Army. And uh, things were, were going pretty well because we'd gone, we'd been in business since 81, being moderately successful. We started going, we got into the military business and that really opened doors for us because people saw, gee, if they're making ammunition for the marksmanship units, this must be a quality company. And Christy and I had something that was really successful on our hands at that point, all going back to doing a good job for the Army on, on the marksmanship unit ammo. How does this lead into 262? Well, in uh, late 1999, the Navy came to us and said, we're designing a new rifle. It's called the SPR. It's an M16A1 that's scope sighted, suppressed, accurized, and we need good ammunition for it. 855 ammunition is not sufficient for what we're trying to do with this weapon. Can you make us something that will be a match for this precision weapon? And I, I, I said, yeah, I, I think so. And we started working on it, and that led into the car tree. We modified the Army Marksmanship Unit 77 round that we'd been making, and that became the Mark 262 Mod O, uh, the, the first version without a cantler. Uh, so that's, that's how the Mark 262 came to be. Initially, we wanted to, we recommended that the cartridge have a cantler on it. And the Navy said, why? And I said, because this is a combat round, not a marksmanship unit round. Uh, if we encounter a rough feed due to a bad magazine or something, we don't want that bullet to stuff back and create a, a, a malfunction. We need to make that round as robust as possible. We need to put a cantler on it. They said, okay, do that. We had difficulty convincing the bullet manufacturer to put a cantler on it. So the Navy said, Jeff, we need the ammo right now. Proceed without it, we can come back and pick that up. And so we were doing Mod O version. Later, we were able to convince uh, Sierra to put a cantler on it, and it's been very successful. Uh, Sierra's concern was they're very proud of their accuracy. The concern they had was that by putting a cantler on a bullet, we would deform a theoretically perfect bullet. To their credit, they were able to put a cantler on it without affecting accuracy one bit. Uh, so put a cantler on it, and at that point, the round became the, the Mark 262 Mod 1. Uh, and it's turned out to be one of the most successful military rounds in history. It's the only precision 5.56 round in the U.S. military inventory. Uh, we've sold many, many millions uh, of these, and it, it's been very successful. And it's, we're very proud of the fact that it's given our military a capability that they didn't previously have. And one of the biggest compliments we ever had came from the Navy when they one day told us, Jeff, what you and Christy have done here in making this round, you're giving the military a quality, a capability that wasn't previously available. And compared to what they would have had to use, this round is saving American lives. To me, there, there's no greater honor, uh, no, no, no greater award, uh, no, no better accolade than to be told what you're doing simply because you did a good job, you did the, your assigned job well. 
there's American soldiers, sailors, and Marines walking around alive today that wouldn't otherwise be here. It does not get any better than that for us. That, that's what motivated us, but that's essentially the story of the Mark 262, Chris. Can you talk about any further of your military programs? Because uh, a significant amount of your business is, uh, is military. Most people don't know that. Yes, uh, Chris, there's other projects that we've worked on. We've done quite a number of projects for the U.S. military. We're the guys in the room that when the military wants something, and it's particularly difficult, but it's small projects, uh, special applications, a lot of guys tend to look at it and say, gee, I don't know, uh, what do you give us for development money? Or I don't know it's worth that, or I don't know that's feasible, or that's not our core competency, or any any one of those things. We're the guy in the back of the room that says, I'll take it. And we've developed a number of rounds. An example of one of those is the Mark 255. The military needed something that would not damage shoot houses. Uh, they said that they also needed something that would still be effective operationally. And I, I, I asked them to define what they needed and they said, okay, imagine this. Imagine we're shooting a piece of AR-500 steel plate, uh, quarter inch thick. We want to be able to put a weapon in a fixture three feet away from it, fire perpendicular into that steel without showing through the steel. I, I said, that sounds really difficult. They said, I think you can do it. So we went home thought about it. Two weeks later, we came up with a solution that worked, uh, and that became the, the Mark 255 Mod O. Later on, we did some improvements on that round. Uh, we improved it. To, with the Mod O, we would occasionally have one that did not perform in gelatin. Uh, we fixed that. The new the Mod 1 never has failed in gelatin, ever. It's We've never had a failure to perform in gelatin. It's more accurate. It's a minute angle round versus a, a, a two minute round. Uh, it is better on feeding purposes. It's all around a better round, but we gave them something that is a, a reduced ricochet, limited penetration round for things like in any situation where you're in close quarters and you want to avoid ricochets. This is the round that would work for that. And it's another example of something that we've done for the U.S. military. Chris, you had asked if we had worked on anything similar to the M118LR. We did. We at one time had a military unit that asked us to improve 118LR. And I said, how do you mean improve it? And they said, well, you know, make it better. And they weren't very specific. And so we received some government furnished rifles, did some testing. And what we found is the M118LR was really quite a good round. Uh, a little bit, uh, I've since learned that it was a little bit lot dependent, but it's really quite a good round. Very accurate, good performance. And so we really couldn't help them. We did a lot of testing, uh, tried to push the bullet faster, that didn't work. Tried to use bigger bullets, that offered no significant advantage. And then uh, one of the civilian trainers working with them said, Jeff, you need to focus on temperature stability. You need something that has less variation in velocity and pressure when it's exposed to different, different temperatures. And you also need better lot to lot uniformity. So the light bulb went on with that tip, that guidance, and we went to work and we just, we developed something that we thought was significantly better. So I sent a white paper to unsolicited, completely unsolicited to the Navy and said, this is how we should make the 118LR better. Uh, specifically temp sensitivity, tighter controls on lots uh, while maintaining the accuracy that the 118LR uh, was, was designed for. Uh, the Navy said that's a good idea. They held a competition. Uh, we did not end up winning the competition. We performed very well. We were beat on the basis of price, but that's okay. That's how this business works. We had great satisfaction in that we propelled industry into providing a, a better uh, cartridge for the military. Uh, that better cartridge became known as AB39. Uh, works very well. Uh, there's a, we're not the people building it, but it's a superior long-range 762 cartridge. Chris, what makes us stand out, the reason we're able to succeed, survive in a very competitive business is attention to detail and agility. We're willing to take on hard projects. Uh, we're small enough that they're very important to us, even if it's small quantities. 
but yet we've got the, the dedication and the, and the capability to work hard to design something to solve a problem that the military needs solved. It's our agility, our ability to respond quickly, and our dedication. And also, my law enforcement background helps. Uh, I was, I've been, uh, I just recently retired uh, from the sheriff's office. I had nearly 38 years on, 27 years as a sniper. So I could understand when the operators would say, Jeff, we need something that will do this. Can you help us accomplish that? I understood what they were asking for. I understood their weapon systems. I understood their, their missions uh, to, to the best extent I, uh, that I could, being a law enforcement sniper, talking to, to military snipers or military operators. We at least had common language and a common understanding. So that gave us a, a huge advantage. Just Alarm Solutions really wants to thank you for all of your support. Next to this gentleman here, we do most of our shooting. Uh, he supported me as, a, as an author as well as with this new YouTube venture. So we all want to thank you very much for all of your support. Thank you, Chris, for working with us over the years and for the opportunity to share the story a little bit.